This is our second video for part two of project three. Um, this video and all the videos that follow are going to be uh, one or two very specific tasks. I'm going to cover all this in class. These are just for you to refer back to later if you've forgotten how to do these things. I'm demonstrating everything in InDesign CS6 um, because that's what we have at the EDM labs. Uh, nothing I'm going to show you will be very different if you're using a different version of InDesign. So if you're using an older version, if you're using a newer version, um, you're going to be fine. Um, the, everything I'm going to show you is going to be essentially the same. So, um, your brief, you saw part one last week. Part two has instructions and specifications about the booklet. We're going to create the booklet of, uh, of all the photos that we retouched and processed in week one. Um, your specs are all here. Uh, a lot of notes about producing the booklet are here. Uh, and the pages just list what is going to be on every single page. Um, and then I've given you the specs again in a more visual form um, on the page four. This is how you set up the InDesign file. Um, and then uh, these are examples of different ways to do uh, page uh, page seven, which is going to show your four uh, filtered photos. And then this is a little bit of an explanation about the print booklet feature. So let's walk through setting up the file. All right, so we're going to go to InDesign. We want to create a new document. You can do it from this page here by hitting create new document or if you already have it open you can go to file new document. All right. Sorry, something was happening a little bit wacky with my monitors. Here we are, InDesign File New Document. You want to create a new document um, with eight pages. You want facing pages on. Your page size should be letter half. Um, and you want your orientation to be Hall or portrait mode. Uh, right now I have my um, my unit preferences set to picas, that's why you're seeing 33 picas by 51, but the actual inches will be 5.5 inches by 8.5 inches. So this is half of a piece of US letter paper. We want to set up our margins uh, remember the magenta line that tells us not to go too close to the edge of the paper is our margin. Set up our margins to be four picas on the top. The inside and the outside will also be four picas. If you have this clicked, this chain icon clicked, when you enter a value in one of these four four boxes, it will be the same in all four boxes. So that's why when I entered four for four picas, it filled in all the rest as four. Um, this creates a tiny problem for us because we want four picas on the top, on the left and the right, or inside and outside, but we want six picas on the bottom. Now if I just go and enter six here, well, you'll notice it filled in all of them six. If I go back up here, enter four, it's all four. What do I do? It's actually really simple. You just break the chain. The chain is linking all four together. Now if I enter six, it will just be in that one box. All right. So this is what your setup should look like when you set up your new document. Eight pages, facing pages, 
letter half, orientation is tall. Um, we'll just do one column for now. Margins four on the top, inside and outside, six on the bottom. Hit OK. And your page is going to look something like this. You want to open your pages palette, if it's not already open, window, pages, and you'll see this. You'll see all eight pages here. Now, if you remember our Star Wars uh, document, which I'm going to quickly open again. You remember I had um, a couple things happen. I have margins and a page grid that are the same on every page, and I have these footers that are the same on every page that had automatic page numbers. Um, we set these up on what we call master pages. So master pages are things that we want to appear on every page that the master is applied to. This is another way to make our lives easier. They can be a little confusing at first, but I do want you to set up your page numbers in master pages and your page grid in master pages. It'll make your life easier. Um, so you'll notice our Star Wars characters document uh, we have three text boxes and an image box on every single page. They're all in the same page, all in the same place because of our um, page grid. I set them up that way. Um, and then the page grid, I can't select or move those guides. They're there. I can't move them. They're, they're just there. And the same with my footer. I can't move it. Now you remember too that I was able to just move pages around and pages were automatically renumbered. That's because I set up automatic page numbering in the master page. So let me show you in our new blank document. And I'm going to show you in the most dramatic fashion possible first how master pages work. So I'm going to put a a big red circle here. set my fill to be magenta. So I have a big magenta circle in the top left of my left-hand pages, and I'm going to have one in the bottom right of my right-hand pages. All right, now you'll notice these things appear on every spread. A spread is two pages next to each other in my booklet. Wow, they're just all there. And if I take uh, page 5 and switch places with page 4, well, um, they still, the page 4 still has the magenta dot up there because it's a left-hand page. So it's always looking to the master pages for those items. Um, if I um, <clears throat> Now, of course, we don't want that in our layout. What we want are guidelines for our grid, and we want page numbers. So you go to your master page by double-clicking up here on the master page. You want to hold down Shift and make sure you have both master pages selected. Uh, the first thing we want to do is set up our page grid. So you go to Layout, Create Guides. Um, this will give you a very quick and easy, so I said six rows with a one pica gutter. Um, what's happening here is our guides are fitting to the page, and you want to set them to fit to margins. So it's going from here to here instead of from here to here. Uh, and the same here, one, two, three, four. So we have a four by six grid on both of our pages. Great, wonderful. The next thing we want to do is set up a, um, our page numbers. So we want to draw a text box down here in the left-hand corner. Um, now, I'm going to show you the wrong thing to do first, and then I'll show you the right way to do it. So, you might think, well, I want my first page number to be 1. Um, 
and I want my other page number to be 2. So I'll just type a 1 and a 2. And I'll be good, right? Um, not exactly. So remember, this is the master page for the left hand page. This is the master page for all right hand pages. So I go to my page 1, and it says page 2. Go to my page 2, it says page 1. And page 3 is page 2. I go to my page 4, it says page 1. I go to my page 5, it says page 2. I didn't set up automatic page numbers. I just told the computer I wanted a 1 on the left-hand pages and a 2 on the right-hand pages. So that's not how you set up page numbers. Now, I'll show you how to do it. You go to Type, Insert Special Character, Markers, current page number. And it shows us, it gives us a capital A. Why does it give us a capital A? I'm going to do it again over here. Uh, layout, type, insert special characters, markers, current page number. All right. It is giving us a capital A because we are on master page A. You can have multiple master pages. You can have every letter of the alphabet, and then I think you can go beyond that if you want. Um, we're only going to do one master page for our little booklet, um, but if we had a master page B, these would appear as B's, a master page C, these would appear as C's. Now I did not type the letter A. If you type the letter A, you'll get an A on every page. I, f I put in the marker for automatic page numbers. All right. Um, now if I go through the pages, we'll see my page 1 says page 1, page 2 says page 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Wonderful. And just to demonstrate that our automatic page numbering is actually working, I'm going to put a big uh, magenta, or maybe I'll make it blue, big blue square on page 8. All right, let's hide all our guides. You can see here, it's on my page 8, it's not on any of the other pages, but if I move this page to here, now before I do, remember here's page 8, big blue square, page number 8. Move that to be my page 3. Let's go to page 2, page 2, and big blue square is now on page three. In design, this is the wonderful thing about uh, automatic page numbers. It automatically numbers the pages. Um, so we're gonna set. That's how you set up your master pages um, with your page grid and your master page numbers. Uh, your automatic page number in, in your master pages. Now be sure, once you have set that up, to click onto the actual document pages to do your work. You don't want to start laying out the book on the master pages because then all your items will appear on every page. Make sure that you are setting up, uh, actually doing the design on the actual document pages. And that's the end of this video.